On today's show, a man makes a horseless carriage in the shape of a horse. A new video revealing just what Unreal Engine 4 can do, and you won't believe what happens next. That is deeply <laughs> upsetting. And a, a planetarium in London that's inflatable that allows city dwellers to look at the stars. Very cool. Yay! It's tomorrow Daily! Greetings, citizens of the internet. Welcome to Tomorrow Daily, the best geek talk show in the known universe. I'm your host, Ashley Skella. Joining me as always, the man who always throws me in the middle of those cold opens, Kaelin Ottis. Look, I know that we don't use clickbait, so I always we, wanted to I just like can. just do one. Well, I just it's just it's that. like cold open bait. Yeah, is that but, what that is? Well, yeah, but it's yeah, I guess so. Yeah, it's cold <laughs> open bait. You threw me on that one. I wasn't expecting to hear. You'll never guess what happens next, and I wanted to start laughing and I couldn't. I'll never guess what I'm gonna say next. <sighs> I think I can guess what I'm gonna say next, which is uh, if you were looking for episode 120 yesterday. Oh yeah, here we, go. we gotta Sorry. just mention this. We got a little a little housekeeping here. Uh, if you're looking for episode 120, it is published actually at the exact same time this episode is going to publish. We had an issue where, oh. for whatever reason, our TriCaster decided to go on vacation for the second half of the show and not record any audio. But fortunately, because producer Logan is so great at his job, he made a backup. And so that actually works. So I have to go in and re-edit the show and everything, which means you'll get it 120 the same time as today's episode 121. So we're really sorry about that. It was up. Long enough for a couple of people to respond to the hashtag of the day, and uh -huh. then we pulled it down immediately. When well, I got that's home. good because yesterday was, was the best episode we've ever done, ever of all time, and it's going to make this episode look like crap. It's going to make it look like garbage. So if you're binge watching, no, Sorry. But, uh, hopefully you're binge watching. If you're this, binge watching, but, let's hit the headlines. I don't. <laughs> Now you caught me off guard. Just, did. just do your new story. This right. is already too much talking. Go. Okay, um, Kale, you haven't seen this video yet, and I, I am dying to see your reaction to it. Okay, this is probably the best worst robot I've ever seen in my life, and I really truly mean that. This comes from a, a man who is a Chinese farmer. His name is Su Dao Cheng. Mm -hmm. uh, he likes to make kinetic sculptures. This guy's like really into making kinetic sculptures, and he has made himself a horse robot. A horse robot. Um, but it looks like it might actually look really cool when it starts going. <laughs> it oh no, that's not I, galloping. It, but it's so like charming and adorable that I wanted to show it on the show because this to me is amazing. This guy is a Chinese farmer. Of mm -hmm. all the people in the world you'd expect to just be making robots, this guy probably not at the top of your list. And yet here he is making a robot. Like anybody can make robots, you guys. If this guy can do it, anybody can. So he, okay. It looks really difficult to ride. It looks like, t it's terrifying, right? It's gas powered as well. Um, which is kind of, there's a- <laughs> <laughs> Look at it going fast, okay. There's an irony in the fact that like we started, we made the car to get away from using horses to get around in and now this guy, okay. Anyway, he says he built the horse to plow his fields. And um, honestly- Did I, he? Did honestly, he really? I, I don't think he's gonna, I don't, it's gonna take him a really long time to get back to his field <laughs> if he rides this horse all the way home. Um, but I really love the fact that he also makes other kinetic sculpture. So he also claims to have made a helicopter, a homemade helicopter for his fields. I had, I looked and I couldn't find video of that. I'm really sorry, you guys. But I really love this video and the sound, we didn't play the sound, but it sounds like a garbage disposal full of dump trucks fill, filled with spoons. I don't know, you know any other way to describe you know, the noise. You know it's what? So loud. This is <laughs> this is the most. And no offense, I love this. This is great. It's charming. No, it's amazing. Like I said, if my I love grandfather it. made this, I'd be I'd be like, be I love thing you. Ever. You're the greatest grandfather of all time. This is the most bleak look at future tech I've, <laughs> I've seen on this show. <laughs> I'm gonna be really sad. If this I, is scare sighting for sure. Guys, scare sighting, super scare sighting. But I like, you know what though? Look at how nice the horse's head looks. Yeah, I was gonna say like, that. Super good. I was gonna say that. It's, it's, it's gonna, a work in progress. It's Kale. not gonna it's win best to show, but it is so charming. Whenever I see him, whenever I see it moving, I just it's so funny to me. It really like, looks like it's gonna fall apart at any second. And I, again, I'm not trying to be again, weird. So charming, we, and I'm so proud of. He looks better so hard than not we can to be do. Bleak and judgmental on this show, guys. Better than we can do because if I had to make a horse, it would probably be about eight times worse than this. I don't want to see it anymore, please. No. I don't want to see it. <laughs> we accidentally showed you a picture from story three uh, that was not part of story one, but like I said, I actually do think, even though it is hilarious looking to us on, on the internet, 
it is actually super amazing that a Chinese farmer, of all people making robots out there, not a guy you would expect, he just taking the initiative, doing it himself. And for that, kudos, my friend, kudos. Good job. I'm sorry. He can I, only get better. He can mm, only get better. That's true. All right. Tell me, <laughs> tell me about Unreal 4. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. So today, released today, actually it was released yesterday. Yeah. Released yesterday was this video uh, showing off what you can do in the Unreal 4 engine. And it's unbelievable if you're just listening to this podcast, you'll watch it and you'll think that you're just getting a tour of somebody's house like in a, real life. an apartment life. for sale. We have seen... We have seen footage from the Unreal 4 engine for PlayStation, and it yeah. wasn't super... I think super... we have that. Check this out. Okay, so yeah. if you see this, yeah. it looks it looks it, amazing. It's unbelievable. But it uh, looks like a video game. It does look like a video game, and it also exists in kind of like an imaginary world, so it's yeah. hard to kind of lock it to um, reality. Realism, yeah. Um, but in this footage, if you can show it again, it's actually of a... Uh, a what, what an they, apartment, a Parisian, a Parisian apartment. A Parisian apartment. Now, what you're going to want to notice is uh, the, the, the creator, Beno... Be, I'm sorry, Beno Deru. De okay, that's what we're going to say, we'll, who is a we'll try that. CG generalist and level designer. He focused, if you want to look for the detail, he focused on uh, lighting... Textures and reflection. That's what this yeah, is what he floors, focused on. The yeah. floors reflect. You'll I mean, the that's carpet. amazing. Yeah, there's reflection. Ugh. The lighting's coming in to reflect perfectly. That is so good. Um, but he said that this demo is not optimized for like gaming. It's more about just to kind of show off what it can do. And mm -hmm. and but we look at it as the future of video games. Yeah, this is. I mean, when we think about what we saw when. Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 came out, we were like, wow, this is incredible, and I can't wait to see what it's going to look like at the end of its life cycle. Well, like, that's the stuff we're going to see at the end of the life cycle for, like, Xbox One and PlayStation 4. So let's talk about what I always like to talk about, which is VR, yes, right? I talk about it too much, but let's talk about it. Okay, so now immediately both you and I were like, whoa, this would be amazing. Yeah, and, when can you we know, have this well, on Let's Oculus. just live... Uh, like in this world. Forever live in that nice apartment. And well, a, a user named Chris Jones, this guy has his own channel. He actually was already oh, got he, the demo. He did it. He got the demo because it was out yesterday. It's going to come out again oh, tomorrow. Oh, man. And he put on an Oculus Rift and used the Omni, which is a, uh, a motion tracking thing so you can walk around. And that he got a chance to actually walk around the demo. Okay, can I just say this is awesome because if you live in a little flea bag apartment, now you just need an Oculus Rift and you look like you live in a really nice place and you can forget all about living in a terrible yeah. apartment. So if you have a lady over and she's like, your apartment is garbage. Okay, put this headset. You, you, we're going to Paris. We're going, we're going to go live in my other apartment. This um, is my other apartment in Paris. If you want to check it out, they have a 1080 60, uh, 60 frames per second one Ooh, up okay. on, on uh, like Beno Deru's uh, channel. Mm -hmm. And then also, if you want to try out the demo, he's going to have it up on his site. He said tomorrow on uh, BenoDeru.com. Delightful. And then you'll be able to check it out yourself and walk around and knock crap off the shelves. That's yeah, exactly. Knock stuff off. Um, no, we leave cool. for that. That's super cool. Okay, so that's hashtag of the day worthy, I think. And I think the hashtag of the day should be TD Unreal. Mm. Because not only was that built on Unreal 4 Engine, but it was also Unreal to look at. It's a little bit too realistic. Uh, nice. Um, what old school game would you want to see remade with Unreal Engine 4? Okay, you go ahead. Are you going to say something like Mist? Well, I was going to say, you know, um, because I, you love to talk about virtual reality and I love to talk about Grim Fandango. Hit it, Logan! Look, someone already did it. They remade parts of Grim Fandango with the Unreal Engine 4. And it looks stunning. It looks super good. They remade the Department of Death, the DOD. Mm. Um, but yeah, they redid it all with Unreal, and then they made like a teaser trailer, and I was like, I want the whole game like that. I know I'm asking way too much. Like every time, I'm like, no, I need more. I know it's remastered. Now I want an Unreal Four. Uh huh. But anyway, what about you? I think it goes Zelda. Zelda. I just want to walk mm, around in all one. these beautiful forests and see like fairies and stuff, and then all the, I like all the monsters. It. I would also yeah. like eleven, the eleventh um, hour or mm. seventh guest. Also, I, excellent I, games. I wrote down another one, but I, I forgot what it was. Yeah, I don't remember what it was. But anyway, so yeah, that's... I like Zelda, though. That's really sure, good. Sure, why not? Let's go like find it. the Master Sword. So TD Unreal. And then um, our last story is really interesting. Actually, this happened back at the end of November. And I don't oh. know how we missed it, because we never we don't tend to miss these things. But um, this is so cool. So this London does this annual night called Light Night Canning Town. And so they bring in artists and other designers to create these like huge art installations that have to do with light. 
That sounds amazing. And apparently it's it, it's in its second year, and apparently it's very popular enough to keep getting annual years like oh, added it's to new. it. Oh, new. Okay. So it's newish. Um, and this was the second year back in November, and there was a company, a design company called Loop.ph, and they brought this insane 30-foot tall inflatable mylar like bubble, and it's a planetarium. So people could crawl into it. It was like inflated underneath a freeway, so you could see it like as you were driving, and then it zips close. And then here, so that's what it looks like at night, like from outside. And then from the inside, you can see they're like so they're getting everything ready, and here comes a person inside of it. They bring them in, and it's all laser projected stars. It's like so you can look at all of the constellations in the sky as if you were the Earth. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, it's really really neat, and it's um, like I said, it's made of mylar. It's a huge bubble. It's like thirty feet tall. Um, and they said that they tried really hard to get a really close uh, replica of the night sky, mm -hmm. but that it's not perfect. So they said, you know, it's not perfect. Um, we, it's, it's close, but it's not perfect because obviously it's I a giant mylar balloon. Yeah. yeah. But the thing is, is there's, um, they have like a sub headline for this. The, the actual installation is called Osmo. Um, but they, the subheadline for this is like a beginner's guide to the cosmos or something like that. So I really liked that it was sort of like, it may not be 100% accurate, like, you know, to scale, whatever, but it got people into like going in and stargazing, as it were. Um, and especially in a city like London where there's so much light, like you don't tend to be able to stargaze the way you would out in the country. So uh, I thought this was really awesome. And uh, now I want it to come travel to the it, U.S. I so feel we can like go it, check it out. should. I feel like that should be one that hops from museum to museum yeah. so you can check it out. And it feels like you could really, it's mylar, it like so it'd be travelable. It, you just yeah. roll it up like an old balloon and then just like Shoot send it, it out, out in a, a backpack. Or yeah, whatever. Something or like that. put it on a drone. I don't know. Yeah. Just drop it in front of your just house. Just drop it You're just walking down the street. Can I get it on Prime? Ah, I'm in a I'm in the space. I'm inside Don't. a planetarium. Help, Help me. me out. Um, yeah, so they, <laughs> they did that, and I, I thought that was really cool, and I wanted to show that to you guys. Um, yeah, awesome. So that is it uh, for our headlines. Um, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to be right back with another round of Into It because it's Thursday, and then, of course, we have your, your important uh -huh. yet l not quantity-wise. It's not a large amount of user yeah, feedback. Yeah, but you look rattled. And then we are going to see our phone photographer of the day. Okay. So don't click away. It's tomorrow daily. Welcome back to the show. Uh, we've returned. Hopefully you can hear audio this time. I'm going to double check just to make sure. Yeah, Kale actually is also in black and white. So if you're seeing him in color, seek medical attention immediately. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> um, it's Thursday, which means we get to tell you about the stuff that we're super into. Uh, and fittingly, this is into it. You want me to go first? I don't know. I, I, is, is, which it one doesn't, is it I don't think, I don't think either informs first. the other at all. Well, I, mean, I just mean like, I'll, is I'll it go really first. set up to? Fine, okay, first. I don't know all what right. the tricaster is. That's fine. So uh, <laughs> I'm really into Face Off. It's like one of my favorite reality the shows. The movie? Oh, the television show. Well, I love the, don't get me wrong. Who doesn't love yep. Face Off the movie? Okay. Nicolas Cage is a national treasure. See what I did there? Uh, all right, so Face Off, the television show, reality TV, uh, movie makeup. I love movie makeup. I think if I had not gone into hosting, I would have really enjoyed doing makeup and, um, you know, special effects. And I, I just, I dig this whole world. And so the fact that there is a reality show that sort of shows you kind of the how-tos of, you know, how everything comes together is super fascinating to me, and I really enjoyed it. And the one thing I really like about Face Off is, generally speaking, on each season, they're all friends with each other. Like, they're, it's not a bunch of weird backbiting. Like, you know, have you seen some reality shows? People are like, I didn't come here to make friends. Oh, wait, here, it's, so we're on reality TV. You know, I didn't come here to make friends. I didn't come here to make friends. I came to win. Like, there's those people. Mm -hmm. This is not that show, yeah. so which I like. Go to mine. Go ahead. If she's going to get all in my face, I'm going to take her down, Kale style. There, that would be Perfect. Mine. Great oh, reality yeah. TV trope. I really like that. Um, so for me, it's I really like the camaraderie amongst all of the, the groups. And I do like, I love the judges. Um, v. Neal is, you know, one of my personal heroes in the entertainment industry. She's just super fascinating, has a lot to say about it. And then Glenn Hetrick looks like a vampire. Uh, which cool. is always exciting. Yeah, good start. And he also, you know, he's his own school, his makeup school, and everything. And then um, 
I love Neville Page. Uh, I really, I miss Lois Burwell. She was great last season, but they don't have her back this season. Um, but yeah, it's it's been super enjoyable. I highly recommend it if you uh, have sci-fi and can watch it. Um, it's it's super fun, and I just I really like seeing what everybody creates in such a short amount of time. It's really impressive have some you, of the stuff they put together. Have you used any of their tips for your own makeup? Yeah, Not um, this. This is actually like, just FYI. This is it actually just a full prosthetic. Uh, I, okay. I actually don't have a face. You mm. know, um, Madonna's character in Dick Tracy that she plays yeah. blank face. Yeah. That's that's what I look like okay. normally. No, but have you actually used like tried? Because you said you were gonna get into it. No, I like. I used to do funny, weird side story. I used to do modeling at a at like a makeup school, so people would do like f um, special effects makeup and stuff on me. Like that was really fun. It was like when I was like 18, 19. So I got to do like Cle crazy, like futuristic Cleopatra, and then there was like an 80s punk rock look. So it was a lot of beauty makeup, but there was a lot of special effects stuff in there too. That sounds pretty cool. It was All pretty right, fun. Right on. So anyway, what are you into? This week, I'm into wearing t-shirts to say knife party. Oh, and also knife party. Uh, uh, I'm what is knife party? I'm going, it's like a, a really crazy dubstep band that, I mean, EDM. Oh, wow. This uh, is exciting. Formerly the band, uh, formerly the band. No, formerly the Prince. producers, uh, Pendulum, uh, created this uh, s this other side gig, like band, and that is uh, this knife party. And uh, I'm actually going to go see them on Friday night. I'm very excited. Their last album is what they're on tour for. The last album was called Abandoned Ship, and it is basically mostly a parody of the EDM genre today. Oh, that's they, interesting. They mock themselves. They mock the whole genre. Oh, it's just every song is pretty jokey um, on it, but at the same time, as I like to say, face melting, because when you go to one of these concerts, it's the most intense experience in a very jarring way but I, wait, I'm if assuming I'm your go, ears are going to be bleeding on Monday, if right? I, I'm, I'm going to go to an EDM concert. I'm going to go to one that rattles me to the core and, and, and is one of those ones where you're like, oh, you survived. So yeah, you that's, So if you don't see Kale on Monday, mm -hmm. you'll know what happened. Not everybody likes Knife Party. I'm, oh, I, I'm well aware, especially I you were producer say Logan. Not everyone lives through Knife Party. Not everyone lives like, Even producer Logan is, 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 not, is not a fan of Knife Party. I make sure to tell him. <laughs> and Logan day. is a fan of everything. Yeah, producer he, Logan he loves, loves all everything. music. Cricket noises? He just likes listening to the Not house. Knife Party. But like, not knife party. But not knife party. So there you go. I'm excited. Awesome. That's, All right. That's what I'm into. Well, uh, now that we've talked about what we're each into, we're going to talk about what you guys are into, which means it's time for your user feedback. <laughs> Before the audio went out yesterday, we asked you guys to use the hashtag TDVRFilm and tell us what you would want a movie of uh, in Oculus, like so Oculus Studio. But again, our video didn't go up, so we didn't get a lot of them. Well, it went up for a short amount of time until we realized that there wasn't audio in the second half of the show. Mm. So some people saw it, and they we got some feedback. So we have two pieces of feedback. And uh, Jim wrote to us and said, I want to experience a flood and bridge collapse during a violent storm, similar to the movie The Mothman Prophecies. Oh, boy. I like this concept of experiencing something super dangerous that would probably kill you in real life and being able to go through it in virtual reality. Like Pompeii. Yeah. Okay. Like, oh, like, yeah, you watch a volcano erupt right in front of your face, yeah. and then you get melted, but it's not really because you just take your headset off. And then Stefan wrote to us and said a recreation of Lord of the Rings for VR would be epic. Yeah! I nice like job, Stefan. Good choice. It'll be a, a choose your own adventure where you, like, you have the ring and you're uh, the you're Frodo, and you have to just find your own way through. Uh, I wouldn't give it back. I'd use it. Middle Earth? Well, no, I was going to say, you find your own way through Middle Earth, you just be lost. You'd be walking for years and years. <laughs> like, this movie would literally last you forever. I don't think some forever. people would mind walking through the world lord of the rings that's true. however if you had a chance to just summon the eagles and then just ride to mordor seems pretty game legit game over i really like that there's a you you've seen that right the the theory that gandalf kept trying to tell them to use the eagles like when they were in the mines of moria and he he falls and he's like fly you fools and he just like keeps trying to tell them to use the eagles and they never do like, I like this theory, That's, this fan I wanna, theory. I want to I know more about Read that Read more theory. about that theory okay. afterwards. It's, it, it's actually a pretty, like, compelling, <laughs> interesting theory. It makes me laugh every time I see if it. He had, if he had winked, if he had been like, fly, you fools. And then fly, he would be like, guys. oh, he wanted birds. Actual flying. Oh, my God. We couldn't figure it out. All right. I love All fan right. theories. Uh, right. So it's time for our last piece of user feedback for the entire week. It's our phone talker for the day. So John H. wrote to us, 
and he said, longtime listener, first time submitting. I listened to the podcast while driving to various job sites, so I missed out on all the videos and phone to graphs, but I but saw this in my drive about the time you were asking for them. I'm using an iPhone 6 with no special apps or filters. This is near Smith's Ferry, Idaho, and it's what an early thaw looks like on the river here. Should be frozen solid, but I guess all the cold weather went to New England this week. <laughs> Love the show. Thanks. Okay, so for those of you listening, we're going to describe these pictures in detail for you so that you can feel like you're right there with John as he's listening to the show. Uh, this picture right here has a beautiful blue sky, partly cloudy, got some trees in the background in silhouette, and then lots of ice over water, and it's all kind of broken up a little bit. What does it look like? It looks like the shots you'd see where you see a sad little polar bear going like, help me, I'm, it's melting. <laughs> wow, that's bleak. Uh, it is bleak. No, it's, it's crazy because it's all the ice is all broken up into different uh, layers and, and, and different sizes. Like it's giant cool. chunks of ice. Like, it's really neat. I, I like the pictures a lot. I mean, it's, that's super interesting, and I feel like I am cold just looking at the pictures. Mm. I, like I, I need I, a hoodie. I like that. We don't get a lot of seasons here no. in Los Angeles, so it's really cool to we, see. We have, like, emergency seasons where it's, like, flooding... Oh, Heat yeah. stroke, fire. Yeah, but even then we overreact. Yeah, exactly. Heat Rain. stroke, it's 90 degrees out. Heat watch. Storm um, watch. But that's Rain really cool. Watch. Yeah, uh, that so is really cool. So thanks, John I, I appreciate H. all the people that are just listening. Yeah, so. we do. And if you ever uh, are wondering what we look like, in case you are hoping to run into us in the wild, Kale looks exactly like Chris Hemsworth, and mm -hmm. I look exactly like Scarlett Johansson. Yeah. We get we get it all the time. Like, that we was could be actually twins. me in Black Hat, the, yeah. the movie that just came out. With he was the stunt double. With him in it, it's just me. I don't know. Kale but Hemsworth. Anyway, uh, so yeah, very cool, John. You're my favorite, definitely my favorite listener. So Listener, oh, super good. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Um, if you guys want to submit your pictures to be considered to be featured on the show, you can email us tomorrow at cnet.com. Uh, you can also send us over your user feedback for anything that you have on your mind. And if you absolutely hate email, you can always find us on social media. We're Tomorrow Daily all over the internet, Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram. Uh, and then we're also Tomorrow Daily TV on Google Plus and Tomorrow Daily on Tumblr. You did say Snapchat. I did. I know you you worked it in there, but you didn't like draw any attention to it. I did. I just want to make it seem like it's a totally normal thing. And if you're on YouTube, sorry you missed yesterday's episode. Sorry. Uh, but it'll be right after this. Stay tuned. Um, but don't forget to subscribe, like, favorite, do, th punch your fist through the screen, whatever you got to do. Yeah, all that uh, stuff. And then listeners, including John. Uh, don't forget to rate and review, and I also subscribe to the podcast. You get updates yeah. on when it goes up. Yeah, I mean, you can we totally forgot do to that. Mention that so. And you can get you can even get updates when it goes up, and then when it gets <laughs> unceremoniously taken back down because the audio is not working mm -hmm. in the second half. We'll give you updates when we take it down. Yeah, just check our Twitter because that's the only place I update. Um, but that's it for the show, you guys. We're gonna take off the rest of the weekend. Uh, hopefully, Kale makes it back alive. I won't. <laughs> and uh, on that note, be good humans, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.